Let's talk about exposure. The exposure of your photos determines how dark or how bright the image is going to be. And the good thing about shooting with the iPhone is that usually you don't have to worry about exposure at all. The iPhone tends to do a really good job in determining the correct brightness of your photos. However, exposure isn't just about the darkness or brightness of your photos as such. It can also be a creative tool. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can take advantage of exposure to create more interesting, more unique iPhone photos. And I'm also going to give you some tips to make sure that your photos always have the best exposure possible. Let's begin. Now, when we're talking about exposure, one of the key concepts you have to understand is dynamic range. So dynamic range is essentially the range of light in your photo, starting from the darkest part of your photo all the way to the brightest part of your photo. Now, the human eye is really, really good at processing dynamic range. So you can look at a really dark object and next to it, you could have a really bright object and the human eye doesn't have any problems processing that scene. Everything will look just right to you. The cameras are built a little bit differently. Any differences in light that you have in the scene tend to get amplified when you take a photo. And because of that, you'll often get stronger shadows or brighter highlights, which are the brightest parts of the image when you take a photo. And the HDR function of the iPhone, which stands for high dynamic range, is essentially how the iPhone tries to address the situation. So if you're shooting your photos with HDR on, which I do recommend on all the latest iPhone models, then you're going to see that the iPhone actually tries to match the dynamic range in the photo to what your eye would see. In other words, the iPhone does everything in its power to essentially eliminate that difference between the darkest and the brightest parts of the image. That can be a great thing. And in fact, for maybe 99% of photos you take, that's what you want. However, Sometimes you can actually create even more interesting, more creative photos if you try to amplify that difference between the brightest and the darkest parts of the image. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. But before we do, I'm going to quickly go into the settings and I'm going to open camera settings. And from here, you'll see we had the smart HDR slider at the bottom of the screen. Now, 99% of the time, I recommend that you keep smart HDR enabled. It's a great feature and it ensures that you get a good exposure where the darkest parts of the image aren't too dark and the brightest parts of the image aren't too bright. But what if that's exactly what you're trying to show in the photo? What if that's what you want the image to be about? Well, if that's your creative goal, then it's best if we disable Smart HDR for this specific shoot only. So that's what I'm going to do. But now, let me open up the camera app and let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So if you look at the viewfinder of my iPhone, you'll see that I have this big kind of V shape of light in the middle of the frame and it surrounds this beautiful door in the old town. Now I'm shooting this video in late afternoon in the old town of Riga. What's happening today is that we have a sunny day. So there aren't any clouds in the sky. And for a shoot like this, that's actually a good thing because on a sunny day, I can get these really bright illuminated areas and next to those, I have some really dark, really deep shadows. That's the kind of setup we have here, but unfortunately, it's not really what you see on the screen because the iPhone is actually trying to avoid that. It wants to give me an even exposure where nothing is too dark or too bright. So if I want to get a more dramatic exposure where the shadows are darker and where the difference between shadows and highlights is bigger, I'm going to start by disabling HDR altogether. So at the bottom right hand corner, you'll see that now I have an HDR control. By default, it's on, but if I tap my finger there, you'll see that the HDR letters are now crossed out. And that essentially means that HDR is no longer turned on. So now that I have that out of the way, I want to further amplify those shadows. I want to make those shadows as dark as I can. And for that, a really handy tool I have is the exposure compensation slider. So to open that, I need to first get to my hidden menu. So I'm going to swipe my finger from left to right across the screen to open the hidden menu. And here you'll see an icon for exposure that says plus and minus. Now this exposure adjustment in the hidden menu is only available on the latest iPhones. So I have this feature on my iPhone 11 Pro, but on iPhone XS, unfortunately, that feature isn't there. If you're using an older iPhone, don't worry. 
Later on, I'll show you another way to adjust exposure. But right now, I'm going to tap my finger on that exposure icon and you'll see the exposure slider come up on the left. So the way the slider works is that I can essentially give an adjustment that will be applied to all my photos in terms of exposure. So let's say I want to create darker photos, which is actually what I'm going for. Then I would use the slider and I would take it all the way to minus two. And now you'll immediately see how the screen got darker. But specifically, it's the shadows on the screen that got darker. So by using the exposure compensation slider, I can essentially tell the iPhone that I want those dark shadows, that I want to show this difference between the dark shadows and the bright highlights. And if you look at my screen now, that's exactly what I have at exposure value of minus two. So I'm going to close the hidden menu. And now you'll see that at the top right hand corner, I now have this exposure icon that says minus two. So that's just a reminder to me that I've changed the exposure compensation value to minus two. And now all the photos I'm going to take will have that exposure compensation applied. But now let's look at that viewfinder again. And you'll see that I've framed up this beautiful green door, which is partially illuminated by the sun. But what's really interesting is that the scene I've framed up here is essentially surrounded by dark, deep shadows. And that's actually really interesting. So I'm quite happy with what I have framed up with the exception of that trash can on the right. Now, literally a minute ago, that trash can was still in the shadow. Now you can see that it's starting to come out. So unfortunately, these things do happen. Shadows like this can shift very quickly in a matter of minutes. So if you find a unique light spot such as this one, make sure you don't waste it because five minutes later, it might not be there anymore. So now that I'm happy with how I framed the shot, there's one thing that's still missing and that is a human subject. So every now and then, someone walks by on the street and when that happens, I'll already have my iPhone framed up with correct exposure and I'll be ready to take a shot. Okay, I can see a woman approaching from the right, so I'll be careful to take a few shots as she's walking right past me. And now if we look at what I just captured, this shot really stands out to me. You'll see that the woman is essentially a silhouette. She's really dark. And what really stands out here is the shape of her hat. And you'll also see that the woman is perfectly framed right in that corner where the shadow is kind of meets. So we literally have this really strong, really powerful triangle that's pointing directly at my subject. And that to me is a really strong composition. Now I'm really happy with the shot I just captured, but let's see if I can find another photo opportunity right here. So I'm going to stay at this same location and I'll see if there's another person coming. Okay, it looks like someone's coming in from the left. So I'm going to make sure I'm prepared. And as the woman is walking through the frame, I'll quickly press the shutter multiple times. And if I now look at what I've captured, there's this one shot that really stands out to me. So here in this image, You'll see that the woman is walking through the scene from left to right, and most of her body is still in the darkness, it's still in the shadow. However, the head of the woman, which also happens to be blonde, is brightly illuminated. And because of that, her head really stands out a lot here. And of course, the head of a person is the most important part of any human figure. So the fact that her head is brightly illuminated really makes this photo better for me. And finally, you'll notice that there's this strong diagonal line from top left going to the bottom right. And that line is pointing at my subject. So it's yet another way how the composition becomes more powerful because I have a strong line pointing at the human figure. So I'm quite happy with the shot, but I think I can do even better. So I'm just gonna stay here. And while I'll still have some light on this wall, I'll see if I can capture another photo. Okay, I have another woman coming in from the right side. So I'll be prepared to take a shot. I'll grab a few photos as she's walking through the frame. And now look at that image. That is exactly what I was hoping for. You'll see that the woman is walking in from right to left and the woman is actually brightly illuminated against the door, which is much darker. So that already makes her stand out. You'll also see that she's positioned pretty much at the intersection point of those strong diagonal lines I have in the frame. 
So that line that's extending from the left to the right is pointing at my subject. And also at the bottom, there's a smaller diagonal line and that is pointing at my subject. So here she happens to be standing at the exact perfect location. And finally, look at the shadow of the woman. To me, that's what really makes the shot special. You'll see that her shadow is really big. So the light is kind of hitting this wall at a narrow angle and that results in a big shadow on the wall. But beyond the size of the shadow, what's also really interesting here is that the shadow is perfectly separated from all the other shadows. So if she was just one step more to the right, her shadow would essentially blend together with all the other shadows that I have in the frame. And that wouldn't work so well. It wouldn't be as powerful as a shot, but here you'll see that her shadow is standing on its own. It's separate from all the other shadows and that's what makes the shot work for me. Now you'll also see that that trash can is more and more illuminated. So with every moment that passes, I'm starting to lose this location more and more. You'll also see that the door is no longer fully illuminated. So the light is shifting from left to right very quickly. And I think this is pretty much the last good shot I could take at this spot. So let's keep exploring and let's see if I can find another spot where I could take an equally good photo. So here we are in another location, and there are two things that make this place special for me. First of all, I'm standing here above everyone else. So those stairs lead down into a tunnel, but I'm standing here at the top. So when people are walking past me, I get to look at them from above. And that is in and of itself a better vantage point. It's not what you typically see, and that makes it more interesting in photos. Now, the second thing that's really working for me here is that sun. It is above my right shoulder and it hits that opposite wall at an angle. And because of that, whenever someone walks up or down these stairs, they cast a big prominent shadow on that wall opposite of me. So I think I have all the right ingredients here to capture an interesting shadow photo. Now, if I'm really interested in those shadows, then I need to really emphasize them as much as possible and that's job for exposure. So first of all, if I frame this up, I definitely don't wanna be using HDR. So that HDR is still off, as you can see at the bottom right-hand corner of the frame. If HDR was on, those shadows wouldn't be as prominent because the iPhone would strive for a balanced exposure, but that's not what I want here. Instead, I want the kind of exposure where we have bright highlights and dark shadows. That way, those shadows are really gonna stand out. But what else can I do to make those shadows even more prominent? Well, I could decrease exposure. And if that's what I do, then they're gonna be darker and that's gonna stand out more. Now, there are two ways to do that. One is using the exposure compensation slider, which I already showed you. And the second method is by locking focus and exposure. So that's what I'm gonna do now. If you're using an older iPhone and if you don't have the exposure compensation slider, then this is the method you'll need to use. So I'm gonna frame up the shot and you'll see that I already have some shadows there on the wall opposite me. So that rectangular shadow is cast by a road sign and I can use that as a preview of what the other shadows in the photo are going to look like. I'm gonna tap and hold my finger on that opposite wall outside of the shadow and you'll see that now it says AEAF lock, which means that I've locked both focus and exposure on that opposite wall. Now, another thing you're going to notice is that little sun icon next to the focus rectangle. If I tap my finger on that little sun and gently drag it down just a little bit, you'll see that the image got even darker and specifically those shadows got darker. This is how I can further adjust the exposure. If I were to drag the sun up, the image would get brighter. If I drag the sun down, the image gets darker. And that's what I want for this shot, where my goal is to emphasize those shadows. So now that I have the exposure locked, I'm ready to start shooting. And in a situation like this, the best thing I can do is once again, just stand here and wait for people to come through the frame. Now, a lot of times it won't work out, but sometimes it will. And when that happens, I should be able to get a really interesting shadow shot. So I'm gonna stay here with focus and exposure locked 
and whenever people are walking past me, I'll be ready to take a shot. Now there's an older lady coming in from the left. So make sure I get that shadow. I think this could potentially be a really interesting shot. So let's take a look. And indeed, it turned out exactly the way I hoped. I have the shadow of the old lady and that shadow is positioned perfectly between that other shadow on the left and that blue sign on the right. And it's really good that it's right in the middle. It makes for a more pleasing composition. Also, what I really like here is that we have the strong shadow, but we don't see the old lady. So we don't really know where the shadow is coming from. And that to me creates a really interesting, mysterious shot. I'm really happy with how this shot turned out. And the only reason I was able to capture it is because I locked exposure on that opposite wall. And then I used that sun icon to further darken the image, to emphasize those shadows even more. Because those shadows are so prominent, I could take a shot where shadows are my only subject and it actually looks really good here. And finally, I want to show you a really challenging exposure situation where we're kind of taking the iPhone to the maximum of its capabilities and that is shooting directly into the sun. So if I frame up the shot, you'll see that I have this beautiful oak tree on the right hand side and the sun is shining directly through the oak tree. And you can pretty much see where the sun is, but you'll also see that I have sun flares. While these can be used for a creative effect, most of the time those sun flares on the iPhone don't really look that good. So what can I do to remove those sun flares? One thing I could try is just moving around a little bit. And you'll see that as I move a little bit to the right, I've managed to hide the lens flare. Now I have a much cleaner picture, but you'll see that I still have a bit of an exposure problem. So the area around the sun is entirely white and it's a fairly significant overexposed area. Ideally, I wanna prevent this because those white areas, they contain no detail whatsoever. So what can I do? Well, actually it's really simple. All I need to do is tap and hold my finger where the sun is and you'll see that now the exposure got so much better. So by locking the exposure on the brightest part of the image, I'm helping the iPhone create a better exposed photo where I don't have a large white area. Now I still have a small overexposed area because the sun is honestly so bright that the iPhone just cannot deal with that, but that's okay. Now the area is so much smaller, so I'm really happy with what I got. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a photo. Okay, so now you've seen how to set the exposure on the iPhone in various situations. Most of the times, you don't actually need to do this yourself. The iPhone does a very good job determining the correct exposure, and it's pretty rare where you'd actually have to go in and adjust exposure yourself. However, there are times when you might want to adjust exposure yourself. For example, if you want to create a more creative photo, or if you're shooting directly into a bright sky and that sky gets overexposed. If that happens, simply tap and hold your finger on the overexposed sky and you'll see how the exposure gets significantly better.